Greetings. I'm a new face at Perpetual Life, but I am so, so thankful to meet all of the members and our honored guests today. To begin, it is my pleasure to just offer a quote from Nikolai um, Fedora, of course. Who else would it be from? <laughs> His views were based on his faith in science and reason. He was a man who really believed the world had been created for a purpose and that men and women were endowed with reason and consciousness. Each had a divine purpose on this planet, a mission to accomplish, but according to Fedorov, he says, I believe if a man does not know what to do, he won't do what he should do. In this spirit, together, we begin an evening of learning. It is with my great pleasure and respect I introduce Neil Vandery, who is the officiator at the Church of Perpetual Life. Thank you, Stacy, and that minute from Nikolai Fedorovich Fedorov, one of our prophets. You know, there are a few things that unite us all. Unfortunately, one of those things is worrying. Everybody worries about something. Sometimes we worry about worrying too much. And uh, sometimes these worries can turn into full-blown phobias like the fear of heights, or as my father had, claustrophobia, the fear of closed spaces. Sometimes these fears can be completely irrational, like a little boy's fear of a monster under the bed or somebody hiding in the closet. According to a recent survey, here are some fears that everyone has but no one talks about. That you left your curling iron on at home before leaving home or something else hot that could burn the place down. Tanya's relating to that? Yes. That eating or drinking something the day after the expiration date might make you sick, ultimately kill you. That you're going to choke while eating by yourself all alone and that there will be nobody there to save you. Or that every time you lose a few strands of hair, you might be going bald. These fears that you have, these that uh, maybe that you're accidentally going to text or email somebody something that they're not supposed to see. Perhaps it's about them. So my question to you, what do you worry about? What do you worry about? My children. Your children. Dying. Dying. Losing money in the stock market and going broke and being destitute. These are all worries. We all have certain worries. When I was 19, a long time ago, I had a, the fortune of going to the Dale Carnegie course on management and communication skills. And with it came some advice from Mr. Carnegie that has made him famous. And I'd like to impart some of that with you this evening. Way back then, when I studied this course, I didn't understand all of what he was talking about. Uh, but over time, some of the things that I didn't understand have, have become clearer to me and helpful. And perhaps this information will be helpful to you as well. So the fundamental principles of overcoming worry. Live in daytight compartments. Try not to allow something that has happened or something that may happen trouble you. And ways to face trouble? Ask yourself, what is the worst that can possibly happen? Prepare to accept the worst and try to improve upon the worst. And remind yourself of the exorbitant price that you can pay for with worry in your terms of your health. There are basic techniques in analyzing worry. Get all the facts, number one. Number two, weigh all the facts and come to a decision. Number three is once a decision is reached, act. Act on that decision. Number four, write out and answer these following questions. What is the problem? What are the causes of the problem? 
what are the possible solutions, and what is the best solution. So you want to break worry habits before they break you. You want to keep busy. You don't want to fuss about trifles, little things. Use the law of averages to outlaw your worries. Cooperate with the inevitable. Decide just how much anxiety a thing may be worth and give it no more anxiety, give it no more attention. And don't worry about the past. Dale Carnegie says there's one perfect way to conquer worry. Bob's going to love this one. It's to pray. But for Bob and uh, the other atheists or agnostics that are here or watching over the internet, I'd like to suggest meditation. Meditation does not have to be sitting in a yoga position going om, om. It doesn't have to be that way. It can be, you can be meditating in the garden or watching a sunset or a sunrise out in, in nature. Maybe playing with your dog or petting your cat. What I like to do is to watch fish, watching fish in a lake or in an aquarium. And when you meditate, the object is to simply focus on one thing and release those things that are stressing you or worrying you from your mind. Maybe one word or one phrase you can keep in your mind and release all the rest. Dale Carnegie says, don't worry about criticism. Remember that unjust criticism is often a disguised compliment. Do the very best you can and analyze your own mistakes and then criticize yourself. I hope these thoughts, these ideas will be helpful for you. And if you're more interested in Dale Carnegie or what I've just uh, imparted, you can go online and Google Dale Carnegie and the little golden book. It may be of interest. Now this evening, well, let me, let me start at the beginning. As we were working, my assistant and I, on promoting this evening, this is our promotional time, we, uh, we went out and we started reaching out to the surgeons and the doctors and the nurses and the support staff of people who were ready for an organ transplant or were involved in the organ transplant industry. So we reached out to these, these medical people and uh, these, these entities, and uh, Bill gave me a call and suggested we need to reach out to the support groups. We need to reach out to those people who are waiting for an organ transplant. And so he uh, emailed me over this actual list. This is the beginning of a very large list of support groups around the area, around Florida, that we were reaching out to. And so we started calling the numbers on the list. And we called the first one, and that number was disconnected. We called the second one, the number was disconnected. We called the third one, and it wasn't disconnected, but nobody answered. We called the next one, do, 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 I'm sorry, but your call is disconnected. We couldn't reach these people. And later in the evening, we reached out to that person who didn't answer the phone, that, that uh, missed call that we weren't able to connect with. And at 7.30, 8 o'clock at night, we reached somebody. And they said, oh, wow, I'm glad to reach you. I'm trying to reach Mr. I'll just say his first name, Bert. I won't go into the last name. We're trying to reach Mr. Bert. And she said, I'm sorry. Bert passed away. I said, you, I'm so sorry to, 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 to call you on this. She said, yeah, yeah, he, he passed away, but is there something I can help you with? And we engaged in a conversation. Bert was the leader of the support group for that particular transplant support group in Broward County. He was the leader of that group. All of these people where it was disconnected, they were all the leaders of the support groups for the transplant, for the heart, or the lungs, or the kidney, or whatever it was they were the, in need of. They had all died. And it, we realized, my assistant and I, what a, an important thing that we were doing, reaching out to these people to let them know about these breakthroughs in organ transplant medicine and how important it was that we reached somebody that was living. So we continued down through the list. This particular woman, the, uh, Bert, Bert's wife, I assume, gave me the contact, or rather, rather gave us contact with the person who was the new leader of that particular support group. And, and um, we, we filtered through these organizations and did the best we could to try to reach out, not realizing how difficult it was going to be, but realizing how important it certainly was. So our evening, our, our talk this evening is, is uh, as you saw, transplant organ breakthroughs in transplant organ uh, medicines. 
And I'd like to tell you a little bit about a very amazing organization that I just became aware of this past month. The Organ Preserver, Preserver, Preservation Alliance. The Organ Preservation Alliance is a silicon nonprofit organization that is working to save millions of lives by catalyzing breakthroughs in the storage of organs. In the storage of organs. They have many world leading transplant surgeons and scientists on their board. They are incubated at SU Labs at NASA Research Park in Silicon Valley, this organization, working on breakthroughs on the remaining obstacles towards the long-term storage of organs by building on recent advances in cryobiology and relevant fields. These breakthroughs will also accelerate progress towards breakthroughs in organ tissue engineering. Innovation in these technologies will enable cryobanked tissue engineered organs to be available off the shelf and on demand. Off the shelf and on demand, eventually revolutionizing human health. The Organ Preservation Alliance is a founding partner of New Organ, a collective impact initiative working to address organ disease and injury by coordinating a shared roadmap, prize portfolio, and to bring together organ banking, bioengineering, and regeneration, people in these fields. At this time, organs are donated, harvested, rapidly, and within hours, these organs must be brought to patients that need them. Now, if not, the transplant likely will fail and the patient will die. The organ will, of course, be of no use to anyone at that point also. So it can't save any other lives. By building on recent advances in cryopreservation, ice blockers, and vitrification, they, the Organ Preservation Alliance, aim to knock out the remaining obstacles toward the long-term storage of organs. Just last month, the Department of Defense announced that it was going to open three organ cryopreservation grant programs that could fund some of this research. They've put out three and a half million in, in grants. And uh, there's a Dr. Sebastian Giwa, the president and CEO of Organ Preserva Preservation Alliance, said this about the DOD. This bold step by the Department of Defense will enable the crucial breakthroughs needed to create a future in which we can stop biological time for human organs in much the way that we have, for decades, been able to bank stem cells, human eggs, sperm, and embryos. Folks, this is really cutting edge stuff and will really revolutionize things for people in need of organs. Amazing stuff going on. The need for organs is vast. The Department of Defense funding could transform transplantation across the board.